our swings are pretty much they don't they don't go as high they don't, they don't go any higher than our than our shoulders we don't go overhead you know we try to keep it safe and right so I want to talk about the press now this is one situation where you know you have to learn how to, to, to rack the rack the kettlebell um, and this is a tough part to teach for some people because you because some some guys or girls they don't get it. They just they, they you have to you have to make sure you teach them over and over again how to get the rack position. It's important. So it's the same thing now. We're going one arm, okay? So it's the same thing set up as, as Garnet showed us with the swing. So now we're going same thing right here. We're swinging it back, getting that position. Now I mean it's a, it looks easier, but at first some people don't get that. You know you have some ugly looking rack positions or swings to the rack position. So we have to make sure we dial that in. And so I'll, do, I'll definitely spend some time teaching the, the clean. That's, a, that's what it is, it's a clean. Just to make sure we get that rack position before we get into our press, okay? So with the press, after we've learned how to do that rack position, so we're here. Get in this position. Now I'm thinking about driving my feet into the floor. I'm squeezing the shit out of my glutes in the back. Okay? Nice and solid here. And all I'm doing is pressing. Bring it back to the rack position. Okay? Squeezing my glutes, driving my feet into the floor, driving up, bringing it back home. So this one here, I'm not really focusing on, you know, we won't be like this. But we'll definitely use this as an exercise for upper body pressing. In the core demand, like it's it's a great exercise. I won't get into double arm because with double arm I see a lot of this, you know. But we we'll do single arm where we're thinking about nice and tall. Now with the press, we will start with a, a double knee position. So we'll start down here actually, and actually I don't mind guys, you know, bringing it up here, going like that. I don't mind that. We're not going to clean from the floor here. But we'll start here. Okay. <sighs> we'll get into a split position, split squat position. So I'm thinking the down leg is down. I'm getting good extension on that back leg, nice and tall. Right here. Okay. Then we'll get into a standing at the end. There. Um, Total body muscular tension with the press. We're thinking, again, driving my feet into the ground, squeezing my glutes. Every muscle in my body wants to be tense. That's one thing I picked up from the RKC community and Pavel and all those guys about total body muscular tension. On the press, we definitely use that. Yeah. So we use the press as a strength exercise on our upper body days. So during the summers, we might be that kind of a low intensive days on Tuesdays and Fridays for us. And then we use it during the season um, as an upper body exercise. But I will progress that kneeling, half kneel, standing press. So, think of Done early. Those are the only exercises I will use. Like we won't get into windmills. We won't do. Um, you know, we won't juggle kettlebells. We won't do stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but in my environment, you know. Sean, you ever take time to teach snatch kettlebell snatch? Yes, and that's a situation where that's a injury. That's an injured player. Okay. That's an injured player who might have a broken hand or wrist or shoulder injury for a long period of time. We'll get into kettlebell snatches. But in a team setting, no. But in a one-on-one -on -one rehab setting, absolutely. The kettlebell snatch is, is like a dumbbell snatch. Um, so it's, it's here all the way up, okay? It's, it's a tough thing to teach. And what, what also, another reason why I don't do with the team, it'll shred your hands apart, um, especially when you get into high reps. So that's the last thing I, I need. 
but no, I, I love the exercise. I do it myself. Um, injured, injured players, yeah, we'll do it. It's a great I, exercise. I don't teach it. This technique and slam and that, it just takes a long time. Absolutely. To yeah, so uh, the um, logistics and the practicality is kind of low in the team setting. Um, yeah, so like I said, we use it as a tool only, not like a, you know, I don't want people thinking that we, we don't utilize these apparatuses, the front squat, the chin-ups, all that stuff, bench press. Um, but we do use this as a tool. I think they've been beneficial over the long term. Questions? As a uh, progression overhead press, are you starting out standing and going overhead or are you starting out? No, so, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't clear about that. I, we start with the kneeling position yeah. and we get into that, the full stand. So a phase would be kneeling, next phase half kneel, next phase full prep standing. And what's great about the kneeling and the half kneel, it, it, it kind of controls the amount of weight the guys are going to use. And it also starts to create that total body muscular tension as well. As they go up to their feet, you can see the nice progression. Yeah. Do you ever use a push press as like an explosive version of this? No. Okay. Because it, it doesn't look good. You get the forward head, you get the, you know, you don't, you don't have good alignment with the arms, the plumb line. You, you don't see. Very rarely do you see a good kettlebell push press or a jerk. The only time you might see is, is people that are training, like the, the level two stuff. That's the only time I saw it when people actually doing that was training for that and the guys were trying to get to level two. Uh, but no, I wouldn't do that. That's just me. Yeah? So do you prefer, um, obviously the swings, No, I just use kettlebell now. Yeah, I've used to, used to use double dumbbells. It just allows me to, it just looks better from the range of motion. They get to the rack position, it looks good, and they bring it back here. Kind of better than, yeah, I don't know, it just looks more natural and fluid and smoother. But yeah, I'm pretty much just using kettlebell for overhead press. Yeah, you know, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. If if it's if it's all you have, it's all you have. But no, in the NHL, you actually the visiting team is provided with kettlebells. They're, they're provided with um, a 16 and a 20 and a 24 kettlebell. So like we just we do one arm pressing all the time. I I must say that um, in the rehab setting, and I tried it in the team setting, the, the bottoms up version. You know, you, I have done that, um, but. I've never spent more than like three weeks using it. it just we want to get stronger too, right? So we want to use a heavier weight. Yeah. Just because you touch on it, do you ever use any bottom-up exercises for shoulder integrity with guys who are susceptible to injury? Just just that bottoms-up press. We'll use the bottoms-up press the same way I talked about kneeling, half kneel to a, to a standing. That's about it. Like I'll not, I wouldn't do like a bottoms-up get-up. I wouldn't do something like that. What about like a step-up? No. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've, I've never done that. Okay. Um, but certainly, if I was doing a, an overhead kettlebell, I've seen them done. I would definitely. I've used the front rack for like split squats. Um, that's about it. Yeah, I, I still like. You can. I mean, when you're using farmers' walks, or you can use heavy kettlebells or dumbbells. I don't think the difference is still the handle's still round, right? Um, in those situations, I, I don't really care. But it's the pressing stuff. Anything else? I have one. I'm, I'm interested in your that, that going back to the difference between kettlebells and dumbbells. Did you get this? Like, yeah. Well, what's the difference? Right. Do you have a short answer as far as why you like kettlebells over dumbbells? Luckily for me, it's just don't worry about it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in my current situation, yeah, yeah, yeah. in the old situation, no, it, it was probably a five minute debate. 
okay. and then try to win it, you know, but <laughs> no, it's now it's now it's just do it because I said so. <laughs> Thanks, my other, I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to get along way with that in the previous right. previous job. What's that? You got Jack Parker backing you up, so. Well, yeah, he's he's not there anymore, but but um, I, I think we're gonna wrap up there. So thank you very much. Tomorrow, well, I'm not gonna get too much into my kettlebells tomorrow, but um, if you have any questions, I'm here. This is hey, this is an awesome opportunity. I can feel the energy. Last night talking to guys, this is a great opportunity to learn from great people. You know, the lineup of speakers. You know, bees, bees speaking, and Justin. And, and uh, Dougie McKinney, so it's going to be, and Anthony, it's going to be a really good seminar, so I appreciate you listening, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you.